Cindy. What? Come over here. What? Check out these handbags and shoes. Nice, but they're expensive. Yes, and if you sell them, we'll make lots of money. But where will you get the handbags and shoes to sell? We don't. You just open a blog shop, upload the pictures, and sell them. But what do we sell? Nothing. Nothing? Yep, nothing. Okay, but what are you thinking of? Is it right? Cindy, everything is right when we become rich. Okay, what shall we do? Okay, for now, we just cut and paste the pictures and then sell them at lower prices. Which camera, please take item number. Cha Cha 230. Okay, four cameras will be 230. How? I think she wants to know why we said it's so cheap. Ah, uh, tell her you get our stocks directly from our suppliers. Okay. We got our stock direct from suppliers. Yes! <laughs> eh, hey, ask her to pay in full. Okay. I'll reply her. Cindy, give her your bank account details. Oh, but don't reveal your name. Facebook account. I transferred $240, but no cameras. So how do you pay her? She gave me a bank account number. I transferred money to that account. Will you have the bank account number now? Here it is. Okay. Have you tried contacting the seller? Yes. I messaged her through Facebook. But since I make payment, uh, there's no response from her. Do you know the seller's name? No. I was so excited about getting the camera, I didn't ask. So, 
The bank account belongs to Cindy Lim. It seems she has been using her personal bank account. Who is Cindy Lim? Have you screened her background? Yes, I have. She's a student. Sir, I've received reports from buyers who ordered cameras and accessories from pictures. Apparently, they have paid for the products but have not received them. How did the buyers pay for their orders? They transferred the monies into two bank accounts, one belonging to Cindy Lim and the other to Zoso. So. It's the same Cindy that Anna had transferred money to. Camille, would you have Cindy's home address? Yes, I have. Good, let's go pay her a visit. I'm Senior Investigation Officer Ting from Amukil Police Division and we are looking for Cindy Lim. Cindy? Cindy hasn't been home for almost a week. May I ask who you are? I'm Cindy's mother. Ma'am, can we come in? Do you know where she hang out? She never tell me anything these days. Officer, can you help me find my daughter? We'll try our best. Zo, some of the customers are asking us for refunds. Several of them even flamed us for ripping them off. Calm down, Cindy. What if someone finds out? No one will find out. Once a Facebook account is closed, it no longer exists. Are you sure? Don't worry, we've also closed the bank accounts and it's been for two weeks. No one can find us. Yes? I'm Senior Investigation Officer Teng from Amokyo Police Division. We're looking for Zhou So. Uh, yes. Can we come in? Are you Sydney Lim? Is that laptop yours? Yes. Do you operate the block shop pictures? Me? Seize the laptop. Also, Cindy Lim, we are placing both of you under arrest on suspicion for cheating. Was it your idea to start the block shop? Yes. From where do you get this idea? I got the idea from people selling things on the internet. Then I thought, why not start a blog shop? I didn't even have to register. A blog shop deliver real products to their customer. Where were yours? I didn't have any. Both Zoe and Cindy had committed cheating, which can be punished with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 10 years and shall also be liable to a fine. With the increasing use of the internet for shopping and recreation, there has also been a rise in cyber scams. After the break, we bring you another scam where a victim was tricked into making multiple payments when making an online purchase. I saw an ad for a brand new racer. That's going for USD 2000. Hmm. How much would it cost if you were to buy brand new from Singapore? Mm, about 8,000 sing. USD 2000, which is about 2,005 sing. That is a third of the market price. And delivery is within three days. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a fabulous deal. I don't know. It does sound too good to be true. Well, maybe it's a parallel import or a stock. Should I get it? You really want the bike, don't you? What do you think? I think if it's brand new and it's the bike you really want, you should go for it. Thanks, dude. Thank you.
Hi, I would like to remit USD 2000 to this account. Okay, can I have your IC and can you fill this out? Sure. Is your new bicycle here yet? What is it? I have to pay 10% value at the tax before they can ship my bike. Why didn't they tell you earlier? Maybe they forgot. They shouldn't. I really wonder why this bike is priced so cheaply. I'll give David the benefit of doubt. I've already paid USD 2000. What's with another 200? I'd like to remit USD 200 to this account. And here's my IC. Okay. What? Uh, I want to remit USD 300 to this account. That's right. It's my bike and you better deliver it. How's your day, dear? Oh, what is it? I'm just tired. told me there's nothing more for me to pay. And why is he asking you to remit in US dollars when delivery is in Singapore? <sighs> Have you been making payments to David? Yes. I trust he will deliver my bike. But he hasn't. You're right. Something's fishy. For all you know, David may not be for real. We have lost more than over $2,000. I think you should make a police report. Okay. I actually uh, purchased an uh, iP iPad mini online. Uh, initially, I was asked to transfer the whole amount to the seller, but because this is my first time purchasing an item with such a large amount, I mean, large amount of money, so I decided to renegotiate it and we finally decided that we will just transfer the deposit of $200. But when after I transferred the deposit of $200, initially he told me that I could. Uh, he could deliver in the evening. Then uh, the next moment he said I have to order a minimum quantity of three. And then because uh, I only needed one, so I said that I do not want to proceed with the order. I want to cancel it. He refused to return the, the deposit and I also realised there's a scam after when I went down to the address on the IC and I realised that uh, the person that is the IC holder is not the same person that I've been speaking to true on email. If you are intending to purchase an item that uh, costs quite a large amount of money, it's better to get it directly from the retailer. Scammers are increasingly using cyberspace to cheat the victims of money in a variety of ways. In the first six months of 2014, we have seen a sharp increase in such online crimes compared to the same period in 2013. The police have stepped up our efforts to educate the public through digital avatarials Articles and videos. We have also created a microsite to educate the public on various types of scams. This microsite is updated to include new scams that emerge. Internet users may wish to refer to this website for new scams and exercise vigilance to avoid falling prey to such preventable crimes. Here's how you can protect yourself against scams in cyberspace. 
be aware that businesses operating in cyberspace may be located overseas. Should problems arise, resolving it will be more complicated and you may not get your money back. Review the track records of sellers. On established sites, such records can give a fairly good indication of potential problems that may occur when dealing with the seller. Understand the offer and pose questions if necessary. Make sure additional charges like shipping and or other administrative fees are mutually agreed upon upfront. Do not be easily lured by discounts offered. Do not give more personal information than necessary to complete the transaction. Do not send your photographs or images of your identity card to unknown persons. After the break, more information on our Electronic Police Centre. Selling a brand new iPad, just eighty dollars. Someone named George is selling. Mm. Hey, come. Wait. Uh, what? Don't reveal your name first. You don't know who George is. Oh yeah. Okay. Great. Let's check if George is who he claims to be. But well, how to check? Just ask for his name. Let's see how he replies. Look, it's an NRIC address, name and photo. It has to be real. But why is he photocopied? Come on, you are just being overcautious. And you have already transferred $80 to him? Yes. What shall we do now? Well, we have a copy of George and our IC. I'll go visit him. I will go with you. Yes? Hi, I'm Mr. Neo. Three days ago, my wife bought an iPad from you. iPad? Yes. I'm not selling any iPad. Oh yes, you have. She even transferred $80 to your bank account. Listen, I haven't sold any iPad. Oh? I think there must be some mistake. Would you like to come in and talk? You said you transferred $80 to my bank account. Yes. May I know the account number? This is the one. That's not my account number. Are you sure? Yes, I don't have that account number. You even send an image of your IC to me. Yes, but how do you get it? You tell me. Because you sent it to my wife. No, I didn't. If not you, then who? Okay. What is the sender's phone number? This is the one. That's not my number. Huh? Then who is the George that I have been talking to? George, have you photocopied your NRIC recently? Three months ago, I lost my IC. But why? I think we have all been scammed. Shall we make a police report? Yes, of course. The Electronic Police Centre, or EPC in short, is a one-stop police portal available to you anytime, anywhere. For non-emergency cases, we encourage you to lodge your reports online via the EPC. Once you have selected a particular e-service, you need to log in using your SingPass for authentication. You will also need to key in your local contact number and a valid email address. 
one of the services in the EPC is the Stolen and Lost Property Index, or SPECS in short. When purchasing products with unique identification or serial numbers online or from second-hand shops, you may log into this service to make an informed decision by checking if the product that you are about to buy has been reported stolen or lost. For most mobile devices, key in star hex 06 hex to get the IMEI number shown on the mobile screen. Currently, SPECS allows property screening on five types of serialized property, namely mobile phones or mobile devices, laptop or notebook computers, portable media players, cameras, and watches. By keying in the serial number or IMEI, the system can then verify whether there has been a report lodge on the item. When no record is found, you may proceed to make your purchase. If a record is found, you should lodge an online police report and let us know when and whom the item has been or was purchased from. The police will then seize the item for further investigation so that we can trace the culprit in the event it is related to a crime. If you have misplaced or lost any of your items, you may file a lost property report. As you will be able to file this report online, you do not have to go to a neighborhood police center to lodge the report. Whether it is filing a traffic accident report, making queries on the status of your driving license, driver improvement points, and updates on your traffic records, the EPC affords you convenience and speed of access at your fingertips. However, there are situations where you should not lodge an online report. Call 999 if the incident is still in progress, the suspect is at the scene or around the vicinity, someone's life or property is in immediate danger, someone has been injured in the incident, the report pertains to a missing person, or physical evidence such as blood stains, fingerprints have been left at the crime scene. We've come to the end of this episode of Crime Watch. If you have any feedback, do drop us an email. I'm DSP Julia Slim, signing off.